I have received a few questions recently over the past couple days that I figured I would just turn into a video because they're pretty good questions. Now the video I did a couple days ago about how we often, in the face of instability, we often use compensatory stabilization strategies and how PRI is very much about getting your brain to sense the ground on the left side. And I understand that is a pretty abstract subject or a topic or notion until you see it from a PRI perspective, until you can see it from a sensory perspective. And what it really means is we're, we're so taught to think about muscles, but we're not taught to think about the sensory input that the brain uses to produce the muscular output. But muscles don't get tight by themselves. They don't try to stabilize inappropriately by themselves. It occurs as a process, as a neurological process, as a result of improper sensory input. Either too much sensory input on one side we're not enough sensory input on the other side. So when we talk about that left AIC pattern, here you got a pelvis. Left AIC pattern simply means that our pelvis on the left side comes forward, and in doing so, notice this sacrum orients to the right. That equates with being in right stance phase of gait. That is the left AIC pattern. It is not in a medical textbook. It is simply saying that humans because we have a bigger right diaphragm, that's why I know you're a left AIC and not a right AIC, humans have a bigger right diaphragm, the influence on the lumbar spine is greater on the right side. So we will naturally, very naturally, tend to favor the right side of our body. That is a normal state of affairs. However, when that pattern, that pattern becomes too asymmetrical, to the point that we're on our right side so much and the left side weakens so much, or for any other reason, we become destabilized. Injuries, lifting too much, sitting too much, breathing with our neck too much. There's a million reasons that it can happen. Once that perfectly normal tendency to use your right leg more than your left leg becomes too extreme, that's where the problems start to occur. And that's where we actually lose sense of the ground on the left. Now, having more, so, so think of it this way. Actually, a lot of people will say, once you bring their attention to it, a lot of them will say, if, you're, if they're just standing straight with their feet parallel, they'll say, well, I really feel my weight on the right side. That's what we're talking about. Most people will. Some people will feel it on the left side because they're so counter-rotated back to the left to try to stay straight that they're actually tilting to the left. But still, underneath it, they're still oriented to the right. Uh, so that, that's what that left AIC pattern is saying. Now you just like to stand on your right leg. Now your torso also orients to the right, and then it has to counter-rotate back to the left to stay straight. That is the right BC pattern. So that's what you have going on in this body. This is a normal right human that likes to stand on the right side, on the right leg, and likes to counter-rotate their torso to the left to stay straight. So how do you achieve sense of the ground on the left? Well, every PRI technique is actually doing that. You, it, you don't realize that because you think it's a hamstring technique. Well, it is a hamstring technique, but what it really is, is get your weight to the left. So every technique will orient your pelvis to the left one way or another, because that's how you need to be if you'll truly be on your left leg. If you stand on your left leg and your pelvis is still oriented to the right and you try doing an exercise, you're not doing a left sided exercise. You're doing a left side exercise in compensation, but not true left side exercise with the proper muscles. So every technique has you getting your pelvis to the left. Every technique, there's a right foot, will have that foot flat because we know well, this is a right foot, so I can make the point with the right foot. Most people, when they're standing, and I ask them where they feel their weight, and I know they're in a left AIC pattern, they're gonna feel their weight on their, more towards the heel on the right side and outside. Why? Because when a pelvis is over to the right, that's what happens, all right? So the left foot, if you get that pelvis to the left, it's in the proper position, and now the left foot has to be pronated. It has to be remained flat. But you're gonna be sensing your heel pretty much at all times, pretty much all times, in order to uh, make sure that you are in the 
heel strike phase of gait because that's where the hamstring has to kick in to pull the pelvis back to the left. So you're being put into a position that is true left side mechanics, true left sided biomechanics. The left rib cage, the, the lower spine, the lumbar spine, which is down here, it's not part of it, will also be oriented to the left. The left side here will be side bent to the left, whether you realize it or not, whether you're lying face up uh, on your hands and knees, if you're, lying, if you're side lying or standing, you'll be in this position to try to get that ZOA, to get those left obliques into it. Even your neck will be oriented to the left with a head that will counter rotate a little bit back to the right. And that's what the torso is actually doing also. The moment you side bend to the left, because side bending also incorporates counter rotation to the right. So if I side bend left, rotation goes to the right. The moment you side bend, you're actually getting a little bit of rotation to the right. So how do you achieve a sense of ground on the left? Every PRI technique is doing that. Standing on your left leg properly in all these positions that I'm talking about, just standing on your left leg. That could be a PRI technique. It's simply standing on your left leg, but you are doing it not in compensation. So there is no single technique. Every exercise, every technique is trying to get you to do that until the point that you start going back you know, right to left without falling back into a pattern. So that's how you achieve a sense of ground on the left. You do PRI techniques. That's what it's all about. Uh, number two, someone asked me why I was so concerned with, uh, about the same video, why I was so concerned with the physical. Because in his experience, uh, he said internal, I think he mentioned internal organ weakness and diet were why he was staying in the pattern. Um, it's a good observation. I never, really, I don't talk about diet being something that keeps you in a pattern. The diet, anything that's a stress, so if you're gluten intolerant, uh, dairy intolerant, anything that's a stress to your body, can increase the chances that you'll stay in a pattern. Do I think that diet is going to create the issue or be the, the biggest factor? I, not in my opinion. I, haven't, I think it can be a corollary. It can be just an add-on factor. But I don't find it ever to be the main issue because I don't change anyone's diet and I get them out of a pattern very quickly. Because the fastest way to do it is have someone sense something. The neurosensory system happens like this. Uh, I talked about on my Instagram post yesterday, I talked about how I have two pairs of glasses, two different prescriptions. One's the old prescription, one's the newer prescription. Uh, the newer prescription I don't want to use anymore because I don't need it, so I'm going back to the older one. However, they are the exact same, they, they have the same frames, and I picked the wrong one. <laughs> and I was in the car driving, and immediately I knew something was wrong. I could feel tension in my cranium, uh, and I had knee pain in the front of both my knees, which I knew was not normal. Um, and I knew it was just gonna, I, I realized I picked the wrong glasses. And I got home, put the right glasses on, that all went away. So the knee pain went away within 10 seconds. So the fastest way to change a pattern or to get someone out of a pattern is neurosensory. Have them sense areas of their body that they've lost. Left heel, an arch of their right foot. Uh, because they've lost sense of the ground. Those are the two areas they need sense of the ground. That's the fastest way to change a pattern, to turn off a pattern. And you also need those to then stabilize the body. Your nutrition is not gonna stabilize your body and your internal organs aren't really gonna stabilize your body. The diaphragm, I don't know if you would even call it, a, it's a muscle, I don't know if you would call the diaphragm an organ, because they just call it a breathing muscle. At any rate, but on the other hand, internal organs have to be compressed and decompressed. So if you're stuck in a pattern and the right side of the rib cage is constantly compressed, this rib cage is filled with stuff. Organs, stomach, intestines, big liver, heart over here. So the way that things pump in your body is through, uh, the way fluids circulate is through pumping. So muscular contraction and pumping. You can think of the, the body, the pelvis, the rib cage, even the cranium as a pump that pump air and fluids. And so if you're, so for something to be effective as a pump, it's got to go on both sides. So a rib cage has to squish here, squish here, squish here, squish here. It's this alternating of squish and let go, 
squish and let go, that pumps things appropriately. So if you're not squishing and letting go, uh, your internal organs are, one side is constantly staying compressed and one side is staying decompressed. Could that cause, uh, could that cause dietary issues or issues with the liver or issues with well, anything in there? Yeah, I'm not sure what they're gonna be, but could it? Absolutely, because anything that's compressed and never lets go could obviously interfere with um, internal functioning. In fact, when you get someone neutral, one of the first things people have to do is go to the bathroom. So that happens quite a bit. Uh, so in terms of internal organ weakness and diet, I wouldn't say that they put you into a pattern. I wouldn't say that they are the main, uh, the main drivers of a pattern, but could they contribute? Sure. Then the other question I often get is, can I keep doing physical therapy exercises while I'm doing PRI? I strongly suggest that you don't for one reason. They're well-intentioned exercises. Uh, they, theoretically, they should work. But the problem is this. When they were prescribed, they probably were thinking that your pelvis looked like this and your rib cage looked like this. But we know you're not like that. So muscles that, sh so if, you know, the old clamshell. If you're doing a clamshell on a pelvis that is in the left AIC pattern, you think you're working your glute medius on the left side, and maybe you are, but it's only the posterior, it's most likely the posterior fibers of that glute medius, not the anterior fibers. The posterior fibers are already overused because they're trying to keep your left leg straight on a pelvis that's oriented to the right. So if you do a, a left-sided clamshell on a pelvis that's oriented to the right, you're not really doing what you think you should be doing, and you're really just strengthening your pattern. The same thing happens up here. You know, when you're doing, people are using their neck for everything. They think they're doing shoulders or their arms or their scapular muscles, and really they're over-engaging the neck because they were, when they were, when these exercises were prescribed to strengthen the muscles that technically you do want to strengthen, the physical therapist in general would be thinking that this was your rib cage, not realizing that you're more like this and on half your body like this, at least half your body. And once your spine is living like this, instead of straight and normal as we think it is, those muscular relationships, those scapulas and those muscles are not working properly in the way that you think they would as if they were straight. Once a bone changes its, its position, the function of the muscle changes. So if your bones are not in the straight position, we know we're not dealing with straight people, the muscle you think that you're working, you might be working it, but in a compensatory manner, or maybe you're not working at all. Maybe you're using other muscles to do what you think a muscle should be doing. So the, the point is, the PRI techniques are all taking into account the starting position of your pelvis and your rib cage. I know that you're probably living like this, but when the, when the, uh, when the exercises were prescribed by a physical therapist, they thought this was actually this. And that's not the same thing. So that's why I try to get people to not use the physical therapy that they've been given, simply because it might actually undo what good they're doing through the postural restoration techniques that I'm using.